I'm running new branch circuits for new audio equipment. Manufacturer says the audio equipment operates best on 240. So I've opted to run six 240 volt branch circuits for the new equipment. I've got 220, I have 115. And these are where the receptacles are added. The wiring runs through metal studs through the wall and around the corner. That blank plate was just a hole I cut so I had access to get the wiring around that corner. I wanted eight circuits, so I went ahead and I cut two four gang holes in the wall. And then once I realized that I couldn't do eight circuits, I had to do six because of the voltage drop. I couldn't use 12 gauge wire, I had to use 10. So that being the case, I had to reduce the cable count by two. So I've got six 10 threes running to these outlets and each right outlet's a dummy just to fill the hole. On the other side of those blank plates is a closet wall. The wires on the other side of that blank plate run into that junction box and run through this two inch conduit through this LB and up into the attic and from the attic they run to the garage to the load center panel. This being a closet I would consider that exposed work and according to 334 0.15b, non-metallic is allowed to be in conduit to protect exposed work from physical damage. And that's what I've got right here. And 352.10f says I can use PVC conduit, which I have. It also refers you to Table 1, Chapter 9, which references fill percentage. Number 2, it says you can disregard conduit fill for protection from damage, as long as you don't abrade or injure the wire. I've got six 10 threes with the ground through this two inch conduit, and they came out to about 57% fill. The six 10 threes punch up through the closet ceiling, and they're at the far end of the house. They come up, and now they run along the trusses. I stable them on every truss. The conduit that comes out of the closet ceiling, all the wiring is fastened within 12 inches of the opening of the conduit. That runs up here. I also ran three 12 twos because I got some electric for outside that I need to add some accessories. And all that wiring comes down around and heads toward the garage to go into the service entrance panel. So all the wiring goes right over to the service entrance panel nipples. I added four nipples to a new sub panel that was already inspected by the county. They came out, gave me the okay, so I put the branch circuits in. So on the left I've got an inch and a half, I've got a two inch, and then I have two three quarter inch. So I got three ten threes with the ground, three ten threes with the ground, twelve twos with the ground, and a twelve two with the ground. And all those staples are within twelve inches. Sheath measured length of the openings for those conduits. So I got the conduits coming through a non-structural ceiling and I've got all the not NM wire running through the conduit. And a lot of people say you can't run multiples through conduit. Well, you can. As long as that conduit is straight, and if you look at 312.5, there are seven exceptions to running non-metallic wire into a load center got to be fastened within 12 inches, which is, it is up in the attic. That raceway is directly above the enclosure. It's a straight, it's a straight shot. It's not penetrating a structural ceiling. I do have fittings at each end. I've, I've got the fittings with the uh, chafferings and everything on both sides. I haven't sealed the top yet. I'm going to wait till I'm done. And the sheath is continuous. Uh, there's no break in the sheath from upstairs to here. And the raceway is fastened at the outer end, which it is up at the top. It's within, in, within an inch or two of it going through the ceiling. And the cable does not exceed the Table 1 Chapter 9 cable fill. And you cannot use Note 2, which tells you to disregard cable fill. However, if you read Note 4, Note 4 tells you that if your nipple or your conduit is less than 24 inches, you don't have to go to 40% cable fill, you can use 60. I mounted this box, total conduit length is 22 and a half inches, so I'm able to use note four. 
by cable fill. I can use 60% cable fill on these conduits because I'm within, I'm less than the 24 inch criteria. And what that works out to be is that uh, left conduit, that's 47%, that middle conduit, 29%, and the one three quarters, 55%, and that one is 7%. So I'm well within the con, I'm, I'm nowhere near the conduit limit for fill. The drawback with the non-metallic sheathed cable, it comes to cable fill. Per the code, this is an elliptical cable, and it says that if you're using an elliptical cable, the longest side is going to be your diameter when you're figuring cable fill. Uh, this is SIM pole wire, and the manufacturer says the nominal large flat side on this is 0.63 inches. That's about 5 eighths, and that fits to a 5 eighths wrench fairly easy. In all actuality, this cable can actually become circular and it fits through a half inch wrench pretty easy. I mean, that, that slides nice. So even though this cable's a half inch in diameter, all the math has to be done as it being 5 eighths. So you're going to lose the amount of cable you can pull during the cable fill formulas. Now I just need to terminate the branch circuits.